You hurting yourself? You okay? Yeah. So these guys didn't do you any favors? Instead of using just foam, they put some, what kind of crap is it? They just put some crap on it. We'll just leave it at that. We don't need to call out brands. Um, so we're having to peel it all off so that we can mount the speaker flat. Mm -hmm. Check this out. Pay no attention to that guy. Check this out. <laughs> Hold on. So this 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 is a forerunner we have here. And all right, hold on. These were the RCAs. It was mounted underneath the driver's front seat. But the piece I'm looking for is this one. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? I don't even know how this thing was still playing. That's pretty cool. So um this is just a uh a fixer upper as it were uh, so the, the the deal today was to do sound treatment and then rewire we ended up having to rewire the front speakers um, so it has a JL 900.5 kudos to that thing that thing played with a screw through the power through the speaker wire and it never shut off so way to go there guys uh, it also has the Sony three-way set they mounted the tweeters there they had the crossover buried here and another crossover buried here. So we removed those and put them underneath the seat here. Hold on, Fernando's just finishing up on the last door for sound treatment because uh, it's a Toyota and it's just loud and hollow sounding and all that. So there, it's like a light vacuum. There we go. So there's the new, there's the Sony's mounted up under they have big crossovers and what's cool about them is they're bi-ampable crossovers even though it's a three-way set so what it does we've talked about this a couple times how the factory does it they put the mid-range and tweeter on one channel and the mid base on a second channel so that allowed us to go in and do the same thing so we're using channels one and two to power the mid base and the tweeter up in the dash and we're using three and four to power the mid base down here in the door that way we'll have gain controls for the two of them and be able to get a, a better balance as it were the amplifier isn't capable of doing you know it's it's a five, five channel amplifier so we, we would need six channels so this is kind of like a pretty cool option and then the radio is going to power the rear speakers in the doors what we've done for that so that we can keep the volume tracking is we've gone into the Kenwood radio and they give you the ability to just turn down the rears, not balance and fader, but channel volume. We can turn them down 8 dB, which we've done. So now our volume will track and that way we'll be able to actually use that. Um, in a pinch, it works, it's rear speakers. Hey, from Turkey, speaking of Turkey. <laughs> What's up, Jeff, Turkey? <laughs> What's up? Yeah, Mr. Jeff came up today because he's got a package. That's right. Somebody sent Jeff Smith a package here. So I called him up and I said, hey, Jeff, you're not going to believe this. You've arrived. And he goes, what do you mean? Other than having a really cool shirt. Um, I said, you got a package today in the mail. So strange. Isn't it? Yeah. I'm almost afraid to open it. Like... That's why I asked you if it was ticking earlier. <laughs> no, no, it's cool though. Uh, I like this. Also, check out Studio N Car. Oh yeah, I like Studio uh, N Car wow. guys. Love those are guys over in Europe. Guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're uh, friends of ours over in the UK. Yeah. Those, those I went there for a training and I was up doing my product training. And after I got done, it was Focal's turn to get up and do their deal. And I come back in my iPad and they've literally taken like 16 selfies in my iPad. They're, they changed my home screen to their two faces and everything. Dude. Oh God, that's yeah, freaking excellent. hilarious. All right, so note to self next time. We, yeah, okay. <laughs> can't wait to hear the foreigner. I can't wait to hear the foreigner either, but all right. So this came in the mail and he asked me to open it up. So I open it up and uh, <laughs> yeah, look at that. Some of you guys know what that is. Uh, the rest of you don't, but this is for you, Mr. Smith. This is true. I don't know who it's from. It's from one of your fans. Just open the thing, man, and it ain't gonna hurt you. It's actually gonna put a smile on your face. Show those pearly whites. Flip it over. Stop it. Yeah! <laughs> Stop it. 
stop it. That's why I said, man, you got to come get these. Nice. Right? So for those who don't know the backstory on this, uh, for like two weeks now, we've been talking about animal crackers with frosting. And Jeff has never had them. And apparently they existed. One of your friends is like, hey, man, Jeff has to try these. Nice. I got nice. you, bro. Yeah. The, the one king, the one thing the non fat kid needs, I mean, the fat kid needs to have is more snacks. So hey, man, you can whoever never... send them. Thank you. Well, let's open them up. You got to try one, man. Right. Got to try one. You've had these, right, Fernando? Yeah. OK. I mean, you know. Pour some Valentino on them over there? Oh, ah. Jesus. You know he would. Animal crackers with. Are they different flavors? No, it's all just it's just flavor. It's just sugar. That's that's good. Right? That's good. That's good. Right? That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I can see it now. Big forty ounce of milk coming right up. <laughs> let me ice let me, cold milk. Okay, let me tell you what. You can get these at Target. You know how you can buy the cheesy poofs in the big plastic mm -hmm. container? You can buy that same plastic container of those at Target. Yep. And Christmas time, these things are hot. Mm. Chocolate milk. And they're those. Uh, I'm telling you, man. Ice yeah. cold, like milk with like ice shards in it. Just <laughs> super cold. That's good, man. My kids are gonna love this. Well, if they get one. I was gonna <laughs> say. <laughs> it's, like now, it's, like, it's like now the, the aftertaste is kicking in. It's like. Okay, let me try again. I think I need these, it. These main, how many is? Uh, all of them. This may not make it home. <laughs> my, my car has sound deadening that was done by previous owner. Did a sloppy job. What is the best way to replace the sound deadening? Ooh. Buy a new car. Yes. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Depending on the brand, it may be really hard to come off because a lot of the butyl in um, most quality brands kind of. Made it here. Yeah. Made, made it here. After, once you get over 70, 72, 70 something degrees. After a while, consistently, it's probably going to be, yeah, yeah. really hard. Yeah, so to give you an example. It's be like my old Alpine gear out of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> what Jeff's talking about is, so these these are different pieces of, of sound treatment here that have been on the door. And as you can see, we peeled this back a while ago, and this is just the aluminum. Well, none of this stuff, hold on, sorry about that. So anyways, none of that stuff's just going to peel right off. Uh, sometimes you can clean some of it off with mi mineral spirits, but you do have to be careful, obviously, for the clear coat of the dry car. Ice. Dry ice. It's dry ice. I'm still for buying a new car. Yeah, but I mean, it's, that's not practical. But I mean, is the sound dampening that bad that he can't just go over it again, or he just wants to peel it all off and redo it again? I mean, if you can peel it off, peel it off. Okay, so in this one, they have already a piece, mm -hmm. and the center where it's supposed to be the, the speaker. So I just grab the roller, go back to it, make sure that was fine, Flat. and then just put the, yeah. the second <clears throat> the second one on top of it. So. All right, well, there you go. There's some thoughts on what you can do to make that better. Cookie man over here. <laughs> have you had another one yet? Oh, no, you, no, you put I, the bag, I, I, put I have the bag. to. I, have to like, <laughs> I, I know myself. I, it's, it's like Pringles, right? You can't eat one. Uh, you can't eat two. Like, you literally buy a thing of Pringles, and before you know it, the whole thing's gone. I, the, ho the whole thing is whole gone. Thing's gone. Yeah. So, yeah. so the other day, this guy is like, dude, why do you keep closing it? Because I open it, close it. And then he's talking, and then I open it, <laughs> and then close it. And dude, it's like, just keep it open, dude. Yep. You're going to eat it all. No, nope. yeah. You, you, you got to kind of try to at least make yourself think that you're not going to eat it all when you know it's going to happen anyway, so. Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't I don't know how to answer this question, but best amp for reducing factory floor noise. I don't think there is such a thing. I think the factory no, floor noise is just a yeah, problem. You, you're going to reamplify it unless you then get a, yeah. some sort of uh, interface module. Well, so it was funny. I, w I was talking to Joe, and we were we were talking about factory floor noise, and especially if it's an amplified system. You know, these systems the. The signal noise ratio on a factory amplifier is crap, as we all know. They're only made, they only put up 15 to 18 watts <clears throat> with a really high floor noise, really high signal noise ratio. We're then taking that and we're multiplying that by 10. Yeah. So we're gonna multiply that signal to noise ratio by 10, just like the power by 10. The the noise, the, the floor noise that is there is gonna get amplified by 10. You would have never, never heard it at 15 watts. You might never hear it at 70 watts. 
barely. Yeah, barely. But at 100, 120 watts, you're definitely going to start hearing that noise. And there's just nothing you can do about it because it's just part of the system. That's why even in the amplified premium audio systems, the factory amplifiers weren't weren't made to play at the levels we're asking them to play at. Yeah, so the other thing to, I mean, this is a hard question because there's so many other follow-up questions to ask, <laughs> would be um, whether or not they unloaded a factory amplified system that had load, that needed a load. Yes. Because like the Toyotas will present a huge floor noise increase when the load resistance is not there. It literally just goes <sighs> Well, that was like the Fords. Right, exactly. Fords become unstable. Yep, so if, if that's his issue or if he's just talking about what's built into the system before he even does anything, so it could be a couple of different variations. But it's very hard. <clears throat> I, I guess the like the best option is get the biggest amps you can and keep the games as well as possible. Predominantly on like the tweeter and mid-range if it's a three-way. Yeah, yeah. Try, to, try to keep those down. You, you won't hear the floor noise in the subs and the mid basses for sure. No, because you actively cross those out. Correct. Yep. So it's just that, that tweeter. It's just... Or that mid-range just crossed over really high. So like a middler. Yep. Middlers. All right, there you go. From the horse's mouth himself. Uh, Dean, when are you going to see the Mustang in the lab? No kidding, right? Yeah, when is that going to happen, Dean? I mean, when are you going to get yeah, on that? I mean, we're waiting. Yeah, aren't we're we all? Waiting, dude. Yeah. Jesus. It's just start like a whole diary. Well, we, we, we have a whole <gasps> thing. Oh, my God. I forgot to show you this. Uh-oh. This is, this is for you Ford fans. I, I thought it was hilarious, and I was going to share this with you. That blue Ford is a, with, has a sunroof open, and it's about to rain. Which blue Ford? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Oh, that was a dumpster. That was rough. Uh, all right, Jeff, this one's for you. Do those new Helix C4s and C1s have digital input? Also, is the Phoenix Gold... Oh, that's Gold... Tom. That's the guy I met this weekend. Yes. Is the Phoenix Gold going to have a new DSP with Jeff Smith influence? Okay, so let's start with the first thing. So the C4 and C1, they do have an optional input for Input-output, digital... right? No, yeah, input-output for optical input. Um, is that available yet? The... Yes, that is available, but currently you can, well, there are other DSPs, but currently the only DSP that works with that optical input is the Brax from their family of products, right? Right. Because you can get the different output cards for the Brax to go optical or coax or RCA out. Um, but yes, the optical inputs for C4 and C1 are available. Um, is PG going to do another DSP with anything associated with me on it? Um, I don't think PG is going to do another DSP anytime soon in the U.S. market. Um, the uh, product plan is not, at least currently right now, is not uh, going that way. Um, you may see something in one of our other brands under our AMP umbrella, but um, who knows? We'll see. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? I know who knows. I, I know who knows too. But I know who knows yeah, too, yeah, yeah. and he ain't talking to either one of us. Yeah, but there's, there's no, yeah, no comment, no comment. Get those cameras out of here. <laughs> uh, did the key install on a 21 F150 and floor noise on the tweeter is crazy high. Uh, so th that does need a load resistor. So make sure you've added a load resistor on the kicker key. It does have the switch for sensing. So make sure that is plugged or for, it's not like a full load, uh, but it does have some form of a load on it. So make sure that is pushed in to the bottom corner. Um, all right, let's, let's, let's go down here. So Jeff's first, uh, so, uh, all right, so Bobby. So Jeff, first car and first system. Um, first car was a 79 Chevy Caprice. Um, first, you were rolling thick in the hood. <laughs> I could, is it Atlanta or where was this at? Uh, this was in Bama. This was like okay, a Bama, car Bama. that. This was like an extra car that was around. Yeah. Um, didn't last long. Then I went from there to a Civic. I was gonna say. Then you realized. Wait a minute. I need yeah. a Civic. Yeah. <clears throat> I went from there to a Civic. Um, first system was a Pioneer <sighs> KE fourteen fourteen. Two knobs, super tuner, three shaft radio with. Um, I think you just got shafted. Let's leave it at that. Yeah. Good God, yeah. man. Ooh. Started with the Pioneer. Ooh, uh, dude, I was like diehard Pioneer for 
many, many years. Dude, I came right out of the gate with <clears throat> 7909, man. I went right in debt. I, I Give me went one of those. straight to that guy, and then I went from there into uh, Premier. Um, I got a Premier. Um, this one, Premier, was the flat face yeah, yeah, CD yeah, yeah. player. Yeah. The buttons were all like di- diagonal on okay. one side. I got one of those. That one didn't last very long. Um, before the Pioneer M990 DSP came out. Oh, God. And it was a $1,000 CD player, and I had no idea why I should get it, but it just called my name. Like, so, buy me. It's funny. You buy yours that says that was $1,000. Yes. Yeah. $1,000. $1,000. So back in the day, everything was $1,000. Everything well, was 1000 Anything 000. that was super cool because, dude, when Sony first came out with their U800 or U8000, that very first CD player, uh-huh. a guy that worked with me, Tommy Heitch, he had to have it. And I was, I'm like, first of all, CDs were still new to me at this point, right? And he got, he got this Sony CD player and put it in his CRX. Uh-huh. And he was like, dude, it only skipped like once. And it was like, I hit a big pothole and it only skipped like once. And I'm like, what? Because CD players skip all the time. Right. You know? And that was the big deal about the Sony. It had good voltage out, uh-huh. and it had good shock internally. Didn't it have five volts? Yeah, that was one of the first that five was, volts yeah, from yeah. Sony. And dude, there was a U8000. It was CD changer control. So what about Kenwood back in the day? They didn't have. A... Kenwood did come along later in life. Yeah, I was gonna um, say that was a lot later. Yeah, Kenwood finally took the turn and started making some really cool stuff. Uh, the Kenwood radio that I had that was really cool was the KDC. PS900, and then it went to the PS909, 907, 909, things like that. And then they went to the mask flip face. But before that, the KDC KDCS900 was the first one they used Wolfson. No, they used Burr Brown DAs, yes. four volt out, deadhead, like no internal power, like everything was super cool. They had the flat credit card remotes. The faces were this odd gray color. They weren't like black, and the power button was like a blue, like a we were, pasty we blue were a color. Huge Exelon dealer. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so I don't can... remember which Exelons I bought because it's like as soon as this uh, 907 came out, mm-hmm. I was like, I want one of those. Yeah, 907 was a Phantom Face or fl- uh, Mask Face. Well, yeah, it was the one Mask it was, Face. It was yeah. The first, yeah. Ooh, yeah. TV tuner all the way. Yeah, it was right before that. But yeah, Kimwood had some really cool stuff. Did you ever do any Eclipse? No, we sold Eclipse at Hi-Fi Buys, and um, we couldn't sell it when I was still in Birmingham. We couldn't sell Eclipse because someone else already had it on lock. But I've been around a lot of systems that had the ECD 413s and 416s, and then later the 5 Series Eclipse radios that were like 8 volt out. You had to yeah. take the front and rear RCAs and like put them into this module to bridge them or whatever, and <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Eclipse was always weird to me, right? And you had a key CD. Right, so the yeah, first oh. CD you ever put into the unit was oh, the keys my random, God. right? Okay. So if someone stole your CD player, it would never work again unless you put that CD back in it. Yes, so that guess what our shop sucked. Team, so at Hi-Fi Buys, guess each store, you didn't have to do this, but right. we all got one CD, and at the Cobb Parkway store where I worked... It was Britney Spears? No, it was not Britney Spears. <laughs> it was not Britney Spears. It was uh, Madonna. That was our key CD, right? And that, yeah, that was the first CD you put into the car, and... If anyone, if you lost power or someone took the, stole the radio, if you didn't put that CD back in it, it was a wrap. As you can tell, that sucked going forward because we had plenty of guys that bring their radios in to have us install them. And um, yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, no love, bro. <laughs> yeah. or, you, or you tell the customer, hey, look, you know, if you have a favorite CD, like this needs to be it because it read the, all CDs had right toward the inside. It was a little digital inscribing and there was a serial number or something in there and that's what the head unit would read yep and it would not work again unless you put that cd in it um yeah yeah it was using the um grace notes number yeah grace notes number um just purchased mti box that uses three 13 and a half 13.5 i was worried it might not pound lies lies. lies. um it needs to have some power on that Stet- thing. Stetson, Stetson VSP? Stetson. I know who Stetson. That should be yeah. Stetson. Yeah, so yeah, Stetson. Yeah. Uh, I don't know anything about their DSP. I was going to say, I don't know anything about yeah. it. They're a Brazilian company. Madonna, like a virgin. Yeah. Uh, Clarion with the Windows CE operating system. Auto PC. Oh, God. <laughs> Auto PC. Yeah, there's just some radios over time. You just, you're glad that they fell into just... Clarion's ACDS1, ADCS... ACDS1 or ADCS1, their their version of symmetry. 
Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. It was a huge box. Yeah. And it sat in a trunk, right? And it had all the crossovers and everything built into it. That was cool. And the radio was a little weird. But Clarion, man. <sighs> Dude, Clarion. That, that was the day, man. Clarion Pro Audio. That yes. Was, that was super cool. Pig Race. Yep. Yeah, even well, Ooh. even before that, the fifty-seven seventy. No, remember when they had the single, the half-in boxes for EQ and um, crossover that you'd plug into? Oh them? yeah, Clarion did. Yeah, 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 that was cool. So you'd yep. sell somebody a radio, and then they had a little half-in hideaway box that you could plug in and give <clears throat> like the EQ, basically everything that comes on a radio now. Yep. But and it was cool back then. They had that really then. cool gooseneck. Oh God! Remember the gooseneck they had? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the same as Blob Punk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, back uh, in the day, man. All right, it's hurting my head. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, Dean, Tenet sucked, by the way. Have you watched Tenet yet? I still haven't watched it yet. I haven't had a chance. Literally, we did our show, what, Thursday, and I left Friday to go to... Yeah, that's Illinois, true. You've been out of town. So. I will, I will, I'll yeah. give you a pass. I'll give you a pass. Sorry, uh, sir, woman who said it sucked. <laughs> I, you know, hey, I, I, I'd I, already said my thoughts on it. Right. Uh, I have a Helix DSP Mini. Great unit. Yes, it is. Yep, and we got one sitting over there on the shelf. I got to get the, the little knob for it. Uh, have any of you guys ever heard the Clarion full digital system? I'm guessing yes. that was it. Yes, the ACDS one system. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. I thought it was funny when Clarion bought Macintosh. Yeah, right, that so whole... who, had, who had the best uh, graphics? Pioneer, Sony? Pioneer. On the, on the single DIN? Single DIN? Like... Pioneer or Kenwood. You thought Pioneer had it? Pioneer? I'm just, I mean, honestly, I thought Kenwood did because they had the OEL, OEL display screens back then. And I thought they were, but Pioneer. Like they Pioneer, Pioneer, Pioneer just had the blue. Clarion, Clarion had the Dolphin. Clarion yeah, but it was had like the race eight car. Bit. Yeah. Or 16 yeah. bit. Kim, Kim Woods. Kenwood at least had OEL, you know, yeah, had the Kim OLED with really three nice colors. I, I always hated those. I hated them too, the but, but everyone wanted that blue Pioneer. So when, when Alpine came out with the blackout feature, that was the best thing ever. Like, <laughs> shut it all off. that crap off. Shut it off. Like, seriously, shut it off. The thing that I always thought was funny about mm -hmm. Alpine is, like, they put no creativity whatsoever into their model release. So it was like, those three base model radios were always the same. It was like, single RCA, dual RCA, three RCAs. Right. And it was like... Uh, and then next year it was those same three radios, but now you had a four volt subwoofer output. Right. But four a, volt only on the sub. Only on the sub, which yeah. made no sense. I'm like, wait a minute, why would we do that? And then they came out with. Well, then you also had one that was just CDE. Yeah. Then you had a CDM. Yeah. And then you had a CDA. Yeah. So, so that would be the difference. Entry level, uh, M bus yep. and A bus, so <clears throat> that you could do six disc changers or INET changers. Yep. Because then with the INET changer, they had a 12 disc changer. Oh my God, it and sucks. little boxes so you can link multiple modules together. Yes. Yep. Fernando, literally back in the day. Yeah. Like now, think about all these modules that are hanging on the wall here, all these Maestro modules. Yeah. That's how many Alpine CD changers would be stacked in your, in your stock room. And every Mazda, Honda, Acura. Ford. Ford, Mercedes, all these vehicles, and there was Pi, Blitzsafe, who else? Ply? Well, the company that Jeff used to work for. I mean, that, um, uh, yeah. Peripheral? Yeah, um, not, oh, yeah, not, you're Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Joe. <laughs> oh, sound, sound, Soundgate. Yes. Soundgate, yes. Yeah. So you had this wall of different modules, and you would put the same CD changer in any of these vehicles. And... Dude, that, yeah. that was life. You, you'd have a schedule that was five CD changers in one day. Well, it was day. funny because I was, this is one of the things we were talking, I was talking about with uh, Hi-Fi uh, Thursday before you came on, because mm -hmm. we, were, we were talking about classic car audio stuff, and one of the big things that Alpine, they're against, not to pick on Alpine, um, but when that, when that stopped, it stopped. Yeah. You know, because like we were all selling hundreds of <clears throat> changers to Honda. Right. And like... When it was over, it was over. So you yeah, had like so, six good months of so the selling. the iPod killed CD changers. The iPod killed CD changers. Yep. Um, For sure. 100%. And then and satellite radio came along. Well, it was out there at the same time, but there, you know, because Alpine used to sell satellite tuners. Yep. And then they Sony stopped selling Sony had that first that. one that was like a radar detector up on the dash. Remember yeah. that thing? It was blue and silver. Remember the giant antenna that was like a strap on for the side of your and car? And it was really long and then had the big puck at the yeah. end with the really, and you had to stretch the antenna like 18 inches yeah. behind it. And I, I kept telling them, no one's going to want that on their car. Yeah. And they were like, why? And I was like, because, dude, seriously, look at it. Yeah. And they're like, I'm like, just give us the, the nut cup. 
Yep, yeah. <laughs> it was... We don't need the peas and carrots yeah, sticking dude, out of the new There's so many things in this industry that have changed over the... Like, satellite radio has become, like, such a, a staple, and... It sounds so terrible, though. It, well, it depends on the channels. Not not all of them. And you have to set... You definitely have to set the source level for satellite radio because even now in my car, when I'm switching from CarPlay to radio, when you're pressing the mode button, yeah, satellite radio is 10 times louder than everything else. And it's super bassy like this, and you have to have a dedicated preset for satellite radio because it's just... Or just don't listen to satellite radio. But, dude, there's so many things on satellite radio that's good. Like, I listen to the old school hip hop channel. Oh, of course. 43, LL Cool J, it's Rock the Bells Radio. Rock the Bells Radio. <laughs> I listen to the comedy channels. Um, and every now and then, when it's that time of year, I might listen to sports. But every time I listen to sports on the radio, I think I'm becoming that old guy. You are becoming that old guy. I, I, get I don't that, listen to sports I'm, I'm on the radio. I'm not that old guy. What sports guy? do you I'll, listen to on the radio? I listen to baseball. Really? And NASCAR. Oh my God! You don't know my NASCAR Does this history. Shit rub off? <laughs> you don't know my NASCAR history, man. I, I am a, I'm a huge NASCAR, NASCAR. fan. NASCAR. Yeah, man. All right, we'll save that for another show. <laughs> Did you guys do Alpine alarms? Yes. SCC 8027 was my friend. Yeah. Before that, that so I came into my my crew of guys. They were already doing like 8040s. 8040Ls. 8063s? 8063 came later on. That yeah. was the one with AINET connection. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we had the original ones. Um, well, we were selling 8080s. 8080s oh, yeah. and 8070s. Yeah, 80s, 8025, 8026. Yep, 8070L. I just threw away that key fob. I had an 8025 key really? fob. Yeah. Nathan gave me a bag of crap one day. What a guy. Nathan Winsick. Yeah, yeah. And um, I have a 8070 non-L Ooh. in working condition now. I just never done anything with it. And then the reason why I didn't do anything with it? Yes. You gave me that avant-garde. Oh, the avant-garde yeah, 4. And, yep. So it's all sitting like in places like I have everything marked. Yeah. That's yeah. that's a nice alarm. That was got to hit it. That alarm needs in. 4 gauge on its own. Oh, no shit. And a day to put it in. Yep. Oh, window modules. Oh god. Um, so, Jeff, how do you like the new Helix amps? Have you done anything with them yet? You, they're still in the box. Other right? than look at them and salivate over them. And, I was going to say. You and debate them. on whether or not I should get them dressed for bed at night. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I mean, he literally calls me up and he goes, hey, man, I got to bring something by. You're going to yeah. like this. And then he just, it, it was like the, it was like he brought his baby with him. He brought it in in both hands like he's delivering a pizza. Yeah. And he, like, set it down. And he's like, so, he's like, oh, hang on. Don't look at my nose. He's like. Hey man, check this out. Hold on, let me open the box. Ooh, do you have a power supply powered up yeah. so you can see the little red lights dance? Yeah, so it's, they're great amplifiers. I'm gonna just say this, I've heard them before in other demo vehicles. Like I've heard them in Doug Dobson's uh, Audi uh, SUV. Oh, is that what he had? Yeah, okay. he had an Audi with uh, four, uh, three, three, no, three amps, two C4s and a C1. And you know, it sounded really good, but it's a demo vehicle, right? I mean, it's someone else's car, so. I was impressed by the sound I heard in that one. Um, the guys from Titan built a few different vehicles uh, that came out to K-Fest that had those amps in it as well. Uh, Titan and Nashville, Justin and yeah, yeah, yeah. Ray West and all those guys. Yep. Um, but Donnie. Yeah, Don, Donnie. 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 Man. Yeah. But yeah, man, I, I'm ready to, when I get some time, to break my car down and start over so it's the helix c4s c4 and c1, c1 and dsp ultra will be going in a dm608 and a kicker 800.5 would be fabulous yeah yeah that would work nice yeah uh jeff smith is in the house and he is looking sexy oh he's Stop. talking sexy whatever uh does anyone remember the pioneer centrate component in dash uh it was five dimes five five din five din half din Centrate component in dash? Oh, the center speaker. The Pioneer half den center speaker. They made a half den center speaker? They made a half den center speaker. Okay. Um, well, that, that well, was... You remember everything used to be half den back in the day. Well, no, because like Alpine had the full den speaker. That was, this was way before that. Okay, so that was, yeah. yeah. This was before that. So. We didn't sell Pioneer, because <clears> like, so, my boss hated Pioneer. So remember Eclipse had the mirror? The one that went on the back yes. of the mirror the center channel. Yes. And their DSP processor had a dedicated center out, and it went to that speaker. Right, because it had Dolby built rib. into yep. it. It went on the back of the. Kenwood rib. had Dolby in theirs too. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that's funny. They all had center Dolby outputs, because everyone thought we were going to be just listening to DVD audio. Right. 
and then that went to shit, and we don't listen to DVD audio. Because because remember everyone everyone that came in with a uh, Nissan 300 got an Alpine center channel. Yep. Or and then Kenwood came out with their center <clears throat> channel. Remember their goofy one that was supposed to like it wasn't like a it was, it was like, like a, a little speaker that yeah, sat on the dash. Yeah. 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 And we're like, why did we do the that? Alpine had that little amplifier that came with theirs, that little silver yes. amplifier. Um, I had Altec Lansing components that my Phoenix Gold ZX450 killed. Altec was good stuff back in the day. Yeah, ZX450 was a cheater amplifier. It was So that's back when they rated everything for Iaska at 12 volts. So your amplifier ratings were at like 12.5. So your, your ZX450... Yeah was rated at like 12 and a half watts by four at 12 volts at 12 volts it would make it like a 50 watt amplifier huh. right perfect clearly the model number says it's going to do four by 50. yes <laughs> right? yes yes yeah. so but yeah i mean it was even the xs series they were all rated at 12 and a half volts at four ohms but as soon as you went to 14 volts they did like three times the amount of power all right so, so last question did you ever do any um micro or dac cassette or mini disc um mini disc yes we did sony um when i worked at hi-fi buys and my good buddy david ward he was the diehard mini disc seller whether it was the in dash mini disc or right. the mini disc changer dude he yeah mini disc was a big deal for us and we used to sell them in the store man we could not give them away really no was, we could not yeah, give them away in atlanta it was, it was a decent market they had to walk so sony we sold everything we sold personal gear and the car stuff and the home stuff so you could buy a mini disc walkman you could buy yeah, yeah. dash or well, no well see the japanese when they came into town from alpine mm -hmm. and we all sat in their big boiler room meeting they were like how how are you not sell mini disc and we're like, why would we sell mini discs? He's like, oh, you know, in Japan, on train, they trade songs and they do this. And I was like, oh, that's the problem. That's how everyone drives their own car here. We, we don't hang out like that. We're not going to be like, oh, did you get that new song? No. We're but it was the alternative to skipping CDs, yes. right? When you're yeah. trying to do a big bass system or whatever else. Yeah. And it was a smaller format than CDs, so you could definitely have yeah. more of them. It was weird. I think you could get almost four of them in the same little area as a cd yeah because it had like a three disc in dash i thought right, right. yeah it was Remember weird the, what, what was the model number so what was the 7980 best player back in the day what was the best cassette player yeah. alpine tde 7544 oscar Do says hi sorry dolby what's up oscar um dolby b and c ai net um detachable face i think you're speaking chinese right now <laughs> No, it's Japanese. Yeah. Did you Al ever? Did Alpine you ever? TDAs were awesome. Did you ever buy a laserdisc player? No, I I never got into laserdisc because this is when the the rear projection yes TVs were coming out yeah. and that was just like I I just didn't like that. I, it was it was a big TV. Yes. And in our in our store, this is like all around that time. We played Terminator all over the time. And over oh, and yes. over. Well, that they was that was the laser disc, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was the laser disc. Terminator, um, Star Wars, and there was something else that was always on repeat. So you want to come over and watch mine? <laughs> it was all. I over. got those. We can we can flash it back. I have what, Terminator. What kind, of, what kind of resolution is it put out at this point? Probably like, 480. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was for it was, it, awesome it back was then. four by three. So I mean, it wasn't like. Oh no, it was letterbox. It was four by three crop letterbox. I don't know. I you know the new receiver I just got doesn't do H or doesn't have regular. Remember, remember input. when you had to get an S video cable? Yeah, I had all S video. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the switching on the back of the receiver yes. was all S video. Yes, I I bought brand new VCR just so I could do it, and my late my late uh, DVD player had S video, I think. Did you have a VCR DVD combo? Uh, I had them in the house, but I didn't. I, I actually I just got rid of one not too long ago that was just kind of sitting on the shelf in one of the areas that we never used. So me and my two roommates, we all worked at Hi-Fi Buys at different stores, and we would often peruse the open box yes. category, right? Oh, of terms course. And stuff like that. So I got out of open box a Sony six disc DVD changer. The okay. carousel. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they, they returned it and they said it was a problem, but they could never get it to replicate the problem in the store. And they sent it back to, re yeah. to the return center a couple times. They can never get it to replicate it. No joke. As soon as I get it. It did it? It did it. Oh, God. But I figured out what it was and it was just a broken tooth on the little gear. Right. It went in and out. 
Um, so as long as you didn't put a disc in three, everything you never had... was fine. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> everything was fine, right? See, I still have a 300, I'm sorry, I still have a 100, 100 disc, 100 disc? DVD player? No, CD player from Pioneer. The big, oh, the, the stack. The, the, no, the big round one, the donut. Yeah, that's where I keep, because I use, I honestly just use it for storage. Wow. So I have all my seats, and it is 300 plus one. Yeah, it's 300 wow. plus one. Because I had a 50. I remember their 50 CD had player four car. little car, yeah, yes. A buddy and of mine had, had one of those. all the different cartridges you put in? Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, everybody throwing out hearts. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Once Jeff shows up, yeah. Uh, it's funny we're uh, we're against a we're we're against the built-in TV DVD player because if one broke, but we're willing to do amps with DSPs and all one. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, trust me. Yeah. That that thought is not lost on me. Every time I go, yeah, it's just cheaper. Let's put that in. I mean, I would. I would much rather put an amp with a DSP in. I think 100%. that's... 100%. Cuts down on time. It's so much easier. It's one location. Yeah. Yeah. No and RCAs. No run. noise. Yeah. No yeah, so no easier. worry of nothing. I mean, the practical... And let's be honest. Those VCRs back then sucked. So, I mean, it wasn't wasn't all that good. Paul Colt said, Forerunner is ready. Let me know. I don't want to rush you. Uh, no, we're... Uh, Fernando's finishing up the last door now, and then as soon as he's done, we're going to tune it. That's why I'm, I'm done with my part. I'm just waiting for him to finish his. Fernando, which... this customer to Forerunner said, hurry up. We're getting on it. Yep. <laughs> so as soon as he gets that done, we'll, we'll finish, do our final listen to it, and it'll be done. So I was shooting for five, and I think we're almost... It's like 5.02, but yeah. All right. Well, this has been fun talk. Thanks again for whoever provided Jeff with the cookies. Um, Let's not know. make a habit of sending me sweets. I'm, I'm trying to get out of the deuce club or as low in the deuce as I can. So <laughs> if you want to send it, it's okay. Oh yeah, send it, send it to Fernando. Send it Fernando. Attention. Fernando yeah. totally, totally uh, help him out there. Um, anyways, thanks guys. This has been five minutes of five star. You guys have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to tune in tonight at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time over on Facebook. We'll be doing the Facebook Live. No, Jeff is not here. He's just here to pick up his cookies. And then also, make sure you tune in tomorrow night, 6.30 also, but over on YouTube, we're going to have Seth Hostetter here, and we're going to be talking about dash cams. Everything you could ever possibly want to know about dash cams, we're going to cover them. We got a bunch of, we got a lot of show and tell tomorrow. That's just the easiest way to stay that. So, stay that, say that. All right, guys, you have a great rest of your day. See you later. Bye, Fernando. Bye. See you. I'm here. Chilling over there. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Uh, I don't know. Just, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, chilling out. I haven't done nothing. All day. I haven't done nothing all day. <laughs> wow, dude, yeah. No. Just, just pimping. Good day, everyone. How's everybody doing today? We hope you are all doing wonderful. Uh, if you caught the show last night, this is the Mustang that we're working on. Um, she is getting a set of Focal Flax three ways up front. The two and a half and the mid base are done on this door. The reason the door is still off is we still have to do sound treatment on the door panel itself, but the fast rings are all in place. Um, yeah. Some of you guys asked, like, where did you get? So this is just leftover pieces from the fast rings that we cut up there's a seam somewhere along here uh, but that is that and we custom make these it's the mustang mount that we make and that's the other mustang mount that we make for these cars so these are not off the shelf parts in the back we went with a set of full cal integration and right now the cap is still on the tweeter so that because i'm jumping in and out of here for the amp rack so this already had a an amp rack in it located just for a sub amp right here. And we took that out. That's the power wire right there. It's of course disconnected from the battery. We pulled out the RCA, the remote turn on the base knob wire, and pulled all that out, cut all the zip ties. And there again, there's the power wire there. That power wire is gonna stay to go back into that amplifier, which is located right here. So it'll just come in through these zip ties and back into place. But now we have two more amplifiers, so it just made sense to remove the amp board, make a new amp board. And what we have is a two channel to power the rears. And this is going to power the front. It's a four channel. We're gonna bridge it 
get tons of power to those front three-way set. Uh, the next step, once I finish getting this done, I still have to finish running the speaker wires. Um, haven't run those yet, but the power wires are done. This is a fuse distribution block for the two highs amplifiers. Um, simple, this is the connection. You build them however big you want. So they're always, there's gonna be someone that's like, where's the wire coming out of here? They're jumpered inside, guys. It's not, not anything too spectacular. But anyways, this is the power side, ground side and all that. Remote turn on goes in next. Speaker wires are gonna come out of this amplifier. Purple will go this way, green will go that way. And we'll wire those up into the back, into these, to the fact, to the factory fit models instead of running all the wire up to the front here. That's where I have to go next after I get done running the wire because I have to grab at the factory amplifier. We're going to um, mount both passive crossovers somehow in this area here where the factory amp is. That ought to be fun. There's an iData harness that'll go in to tee in so we can get all our speaker wires there. It's going to be one of those up there. I think it's FO. It's either, I think it's an FO3 goes into that. And that'll give us the mid-range, the mid-base, the mid-range. The mid-range and tweeter on the same channel from the factory. So we're just running new wires. Here's the existing tweeter wire. The tweeter's already in place there. This one I've already put back in earlier today. So the wire is located right there next to Fernando. So that'll be the tweeter wire. And then we'll zip tie the factory tweeter wire up into that area, just like he's doing here with all those zip ties. So they don't rattle around in the door. But that's what's happening inside of this. Tonight at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, we are gonna have Mr. Seth Hostetter here and we're gonna talk about dash cams. We're not gonna have him here on Instagram, we're gonna have him over on YouTube. So we have the YouTube show at 6.30. Um, don't worry, we're going to get over as quick as we can so that we don't interrupt the kicker guys with their box stuff. But we're going to talk about dash cams because, well, let's be honest, we could all use a little information about dash cams. It's a new thing that, you know, a lot of us are interested in, but we're just curious. So we're going to end that curiosity tonight. He's got a great presentation set up for us. So we're going to kick back, relax, ask some questions about dash cams, figure some stuff out. Have a good time learning about them, and maybe it's something that you're going to be interested in doing for yourself. They're pretty simple to install, some of them. Some of them are a little bit harder. We'll have some techniques for that. And of course, we're going to have a brand new product unveiling tonight also in the dash cam world. So we're super excited about that. No one has brand new. Like, no one has talked about it. No one knows anything. It's going to be a brand new product that they're talking about uh, for cams. Pretty exciting, right, Fernando? Very exciting. Yes. I know, right? So that's tonight, 6.30 Eastern Standard Time on the YouTube, the Five Star Network, as it were. Um, but I think did I get everything on this? Yeah, so these are the little tweeter caps. I'm hoping to God we don't forget to take these off. But these are the little tweeter caps I was talking about. So they give you, there's metal tweeters here. So they give you these caps to protect the tweeter. I didn't want to take them off with the side panel off just because there's no grills or anything like that. So I was like, hey, let's leave these on. And it wouldn't be the first time we accidentally left them on, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, what happens when you disconnect A and C because it doesn't block road noise? Nothing, nothing really happens. I mean, it just it's just like every other car. I mean, it doesn't hurt the car. It just <sighs> It's just one of those stupid things. Uh, should I seal my mid speakers? No, they're an infinite, it's basically an infinite baffle speaker. So um, a lot of the times if you have some cotton or something like that that you can put behind them, black hole from uh, Orca seems to work really well. Some sort of jute behind that, but sealing them up can be, can really hurt them because they do need airspace. So even though they're small, it's gonna need more airspace than just a little tiny cup behind him. What subs are you going with in the Mustang? She has two, are they P3s? Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't know, hold on. They were already in here. Uh, they might be P2s. Hold on, let me check. I, I thought they were shallow mount. Hang on. 
Um, ah, she's got P3 shallows. Yep, she's got that thing. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, because this is Yeah. Um, no, they're P2s. Yeah, she's got two P2s. I'm doing okay. All right, there we go. Yeah, she's got two P2s in a sealed enclosure for the Mustang. Um, is the AR pretty much an Amp Pro because the because the one RCA? No, I mean they basically both get you to the same road. An Amp Pro versus an AR. It's just a matter of how you're going to do it. Amp Pro is designed to keep the factory amplifier and give you a preamp section um, before the factory amplifier. So if you're gonna do some system where you're just gonna add a sub or you're just gonna add front and sub and you wanna keep in rears or whatever you wanna do, um, you can do that with an Amp Pro. An AR removes the factory amplifier and is designed to work with a third party piece right now. So a DSR-1 or the Kenwood Exelon amplifier or the Audison or the Arc, those kind of things. So it's a little bit different, different stuff. Any speaker, what do you recommend? I can't find aftermarket amp integration. Um, on an MDX 2017, the factory it's going to depend if if it has a factory subwoofer on those bigger cars like like the pilot and the ridgeline the amplifier for the subwoofer is built into the radio um so there's really no external amplifier on some of those the mdx i believe is the same way that there is no external amplifier it's built into the radio so might want to check that out Hey, two kicker L7 T12s or four L T's 10 inch in a crew cab, same power. Hmm, that's a tough one. I don't know. That's a that's a tough one, man. I mean, ideally, I'd like the four tens just because, but I feel like small, small airspace, not more power. You're probably gonna be better off with the two twelves. I'd probably stick with the 212s, especially if you're not gonna do more power. Uh, for the Temple Ultras, do you use zero or plus three when running passive on audio control? We always start at zero, regardless of what it is. There's no DSP going into this. This is a straight, normal, everyday system as far as that goes. However, she does have the XR1007, uh, 10, which has the parametric EQ, the time alignment, all those fun things built into it. So we still will be doing basic uh, equalization and tuning through the radio, but no, she's not going for the, it's just top down, make it loud. Straight top down, make it loud. So that's what we got. Um, how can you tell if your car has a factory amp, front speakers have passive crossovers, 05 Explorer XLT? Uh, if it's an Explorer 05, I don't remember where the amplifier is in that. Um, does it have a factory subwoofer? If it's an Explorer, if it has a factory subwoofer, no, because that's right. It would say it would be badged. If it's a Ford, it would have to be badged to have a full factory amplifier. Some of those just have a sub amp, and some of those, so if it says Sony or something like that, then it would have the full outboard amplifier. If it just has a factory subwoofer, it may just have a factory subwoofer amplifier, um, which some of those do. So check for the badging. Uh, do you offer your customers SCAR audio subs and stuff? We, Paul sells SCAR audio. So yes, I guess would be an answer to the question. How did you get into the Honda high level, solder some RCAs or high level to low level and after before the amplifier. Uh, the one that we did the other day, the Honda Accord with that particular year, uh, it's just RCAs. It's variable voltage output from the uh, radio into the factory amplifier. So you have front, rear, and sub actually. It's a five channel line level output. You just use the uh, Stinger uh, RCAs um, at the amplifier. Actually, we, we just extend the wires from the factory amplifier to the RCA inputs at the amplifier. So we don't we don't put two connection points. We just, because we can make our own harness, we just take the Metro harness and solder in our own so we can unplug it if we need to. 
but we just solder RCAs in at the amplifier side. So for example, um, the leftover wiring from that is all right here. This was all the factory colored uh, uh, RCA wire. Um, so we just ran this, we soldered RCAs on us, plugged it into our amplifiers, ran this forward up to where the factory wiring was, soldered, matched up. So like you have a pink blue, there's a pink, I'm sorry, pink blue, purple blue. We just match color for color, soldered it all, and you're done. Hey guys. Hey. Uh, is it just you and Fernando that work there? Uh, and Paul, the owner, he's the, the sales guy, but yes, it's just us two that work in the little cave that we have. Um, yeah, it's just two of us. Hey, what's going on? Uh, can you add Moscone Bluetooth adapter to a Zen TV for my 2024 F-150? The Zen doesn't have, the Zen, I don't know, Zen TV. Zen ATV? No, no, it's the Zen TV. I honestly don't know. I've never tried. If it has, so what the Moscone has output wise, you can answer your own question there, I guess. If you're familiar with the TV, I'm, I'm not. I haven't done one. Um, but what basically you have out is you have an RCA left and right output and you have a Tosh Link output. So as long as you have one of those two connection points on your device, you can plug this in um, and that's, yeah, there you go. Hope that helps. How are you integrating in the Mustang? She's already got a Kenwood that we put in here with an RR attached to it. So we're pulling out the factory amplifier and we're going to go with a regular, uh, we're gonna do an AFO3 harness, I believe which will allow us to take out the factory amplifier uh, and give us the wiring we need. But as far as everything else goes, it's just a RC output into the amplifiers. It's pretty straightforward. Um, what do you suggest adding a sub and amp to a 2021 BMW X5? Some people are saying you can't add aftermarket to the new BMWs. Uh, that's a possibility. Um, honestly, I don't know. We haven't had one come in yet. So you'd have to do some testing um, you know, we test for fake engine noise. We test for automatic noise canceling. There's a lot of tests that need to be done and some BMWs you can bypass that stuff and some BMWs you can't. So I don't know. We would, ha we would have to dig into it and you know, that's where the forums come in. On a 3 component, if you use passive crossers, if you set amp, flat or high pass, uh, you're gonna be using a high pass output. The passive crossover has a bottom for the tweeter, meaning the lowest frequency it'll play, a top for the mid-range, meaning the high, there again, the highest frequency it'll play. So lowest frequency for the tweeter, highest frequency for the mid-range, lowest frequency for the mid-range, highest frequency for the mid-bass, no low frequency for the mid-bass. So your amplifier is gonna provide that to keep the bass from blowing the whole, the whole kit and caboodle. So that's how that works. Is the Idanalink Maestro all you need to integrate a head unit into a 2019 Camry non-JBL system? Yep, pretty much. And a radio that's compatible. Or, no, you're not doing AC controls, so yeah, you just need, that'll work fine. Have you ever got a question regarding car stereo that you can't answer? All the time. I mean, we don't know everything. We know a lot, but there's always, there's always a question that, well, not always, but there are questions that need more information. So, you know, just like the BMW question, it's like we, we can't answer that because we don't have the car in front of us. There needs to be testing that's done. So you have to have to test to see what it's doing and then take an excessive amount of the car apart to see if the ANC module is a... So on some of the older BMWs, the ANC module is a separate unit. You could just bypass it. Um, so... Uh, but there again, in some of the BMWs, they also make interfaces for from Mobridge. So there's there's all kinds of fun stuff available there. Is it okay to run Speedwire RCAs and Powerwire on the same side and run and turn halfway? Okay, so let's let's play along. Here's the deal. 
this giant bundle of wire right here, this giant thing, this thing is, this is, this is the size of a quarter. There's one here and there's one there. There's, look at, look at all this wiring, okay? Do you honestly think for a minute that it's gonna matter whether your power wires ran here, here, and your speaker wires are on here, here, your RCAs are on here and here. Do you, do you think it's gonna matter? I mean, if the factory amplifier, like in, my, in the Camaro, was located back here, it ran along the car next to the power wire up into the dash. It all has to do with the equipment you're using. It's 100% the equipment you're using. There is so much noise generated in these cars. There is wires for stuff everywhere. So, there, there's no perfect answer. There's no perfect way to run a wire. Unless you're pulling the whole interior out of the car and taping stuff as far away from everything you can. You can, I'm sorry. Uh, good, you're gonna have a hard time. So, three 12W7s on a 1200.1 underpowered. Ah, uh, yeah, I think so. I would, yeah. I maybe would look into maybe a 24 or a 3K probably better there hey guys hey uh, uh, thank you for all your not and have ever used extant oxygen subs from back in the day no thankfully no god yeah i know what you're talking about the uh, yeah but nope no octagon subs from extant back in the day uh, but speaking of back in the day tonight at 6 30 eastern standard time make sure you tune in to youtube Seth Hostetter, Dash Cams, Kenwood, JV, JVC Kenwood. Got to say it right. Um, stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of fun. I'm super excited about this one, guys. You excited, Fernando? Yes, sir. There you go. He's excited, which means you should be excited. That's it, guys. Thanks for tuning in. It's been 5 Minutes of 5 Star. We'll see you tonight. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Hi, Dean. How come you're outside having fun with everyone? I'm going to. <laughs> if, you guys, if you guys ever wonder why there if you ever hear voices strange voices in the back of the videos it's, it's the guys next door out outside taking care of 420. um but anyways what we got here today is this awesome toyota tacoma yes sir i got it right Thank hey you. i know right and what we just got done doing is he drove in he had this guy already in here which is the key 200.4 yep. and he added the key i know i got it right that's two for two he added the key 501 on the subwoofer. He did the L7T that we do in the back here behind this panel. We've seen that. Um, he had the eight inch kicker amplified all in one. Mm -hmm. hey. Hi. That was behind this seat, which you just boxed up, right? Yeah, yeah, everything is right here, so. Oh, you put it on there. I put it in the same boxes, why not? So he took out his. KS. No, he took out his DS, DS and put in KS and all the way, the way around. And then he and took this guy out and went with that L7T yeah. and the 501. Yeah. He built this board right here, um, which is cool. Yeah. But I wanted to mount my amp in the same spot as he had his. So I, I went ahead and made him another board to mount it underneath there. He's keeping the factory radio. Yep. We just need to snap the bezel back on. And mm -hmm. this guy's done. We were just, we are getting ready to put it all back together. That's why we'd already pulled all our, our makeup out and our dresses and our steering wheel covers. Because we were just, and I was like, wait, we should go on. Yeah, be careful. Whoa, we'll I know. Um, he's got his gas cans. But he has them for a reason. He actually drove here from Arizona. Arizona? Arizona to have us just upgrade, do a little bit of an upgrade inside of here. Uh, we added fast rings to the KS that we just did. He also has the KS two and a half up in the dash. She has a little cute little KS up here. And what we did is we took the kicker key and instead of using it to power front and rear, we wanted to be able to have some volume control between those and the six by nines. So we did something a little bit different. We didn't run it in bi amp mode because the six by nines are coaxials. There's a tweeter in there. So we wanted to make sure we still got some tweeter playing. So we turned off the fader option on it, but then we also left off the buy-amp mode. When in buy-amp mode, it crosses those over as a mid-bass. And we wanted to make sure we got some treble out of them because there's tweeters there. So when you turn fader off 
and then let it run its course, you do have to put capacitors on the top speakers because it's relying on you to set the crossover in the amplifier. So we put some bass blockers on them, no big deal there. But now we're able to have level control between the two and a halfs and the six by nines. Much better sound, way better from there. What's up from Kentucky? And then of course add the 501. The rears are just playing off of the radio. It's not, it's not loud enough to ever affect them because you're still, where those distort is where they're, these signals gonna distort. So, you know, when you're turning up the volume, it's a factory radio, you turn that up, and when it starts to break apart, that's as far as it's gonna go. So, we were right at there, they're just not screaming from behind at you. Uh, best way to integrate a factory backup camera into 2012 F-150 to the aftermarket radio. Buy the iData kit. I think it integrates in, no problem. Unless it's up in the mirror, but um, if it's up in the mirror, we, we do have a video how to retain your factory backup camera. Uh, it's in an F-250, we show it, so it's pretty close, but otherwise, I think the iData kit comes with the interface to, or the harness to do that. I think the pack kit does too. What's up from California? Uh, local shops options for DSP is the Kenwood 5 channel the JL Audio DSP or the Kicker Key JL option is $700 more than Kicker Key JL op uh, will the sound be much better so there again that gives you the out like we had to fool this into getting it to sound the way we wanted it to that's the problem with the Kicker Key is it's you put the mic in you let it run eight out of ten times is exactly what you want but it's those two times that you're like, all right, we gotta get creative with this thing. Whereas if you do like the Kenwood or the um, JL, you can, they're infinitely adjustable, which there again is its own problem because you're gonna spend a lot of time setting those things up. Uh, don't forget there's also the internet that allows you, unless you're planning on letting them tune it. Um, personally for me, if I want an infinite control for myself, I'd go with the JL or the Kenwood. Um, the Kenwood is this guy right here, I'm assuming, if you're gonna do iData connection. This is pretty nice too. Actually, out of all of them, you know, this one is, the Kenwood is pretty nice because you just use your smartphone to set it up and it's not as deep as the JL. So it's kind of like a nice in-between. You still get the ability to tune it yourself, um, but it's not as like over the top complicated as the JL. You don't have as many features. So that's, that's a, all right, well, there you go. It's on the table. You figure out what you want to do. Um, do those Tacomas have party mode like the Forerunner? I hate the fact that it turns off rear speakers in the front. No, this does not have party mode. Thank God. Or PA mode. That That's in the, um, that other little SUV they make. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. I know what you're talking about. Um, we actually had to bypass that and one guy's like, my door speakers aren't working. And we're like, all right. He goes, I just want them on an amp. I don't want to deal with any of this crazy stuff. We're like, perfect, we can do that. Um, that was funny. Yeah, they were the loudest rear speakers you've ever heard. He loved it. Um, but yeah, so this was a nice little upgrade. Um, simple, nice front stage, uh, nice sound, very full, little bass. Yeah. You know, and it's like takes up almost no room underneath that seat and you have a, a really nice little system um, Last time you answered for the Civic four speaker. I'm about EX Civic the eight speaker um, 2019 four four or eight does it have factory time alignment all pass but it has all that fun stuff uh, We'll use 608 and it, oh, you're gonna have a hard time with that 608 it's only got six inputs um, <laughs> uh, okay so that's the minimum amount you're gonna need so you got uh, front tweeter front mid center and sub you're gonna have to grab or 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 just or. if you can find it get the Metra interface and just deal with no Bluetooth phone calls for a while we got a package today you want to open it real quick before yeah. you head over there um, this is from our friend Oscar out of Texas yeah. Uh, he frequents the show quite often. He is an installer too. He was the rookie rookie of the year this year. Yeah, he was. He's, he's a big fan. I'm a big fan of his. The guy does incredible work. Um, let's see what he, he said. I got to send you guys something. We're like, okay. Oh, I love this brand. What is it? Open them up. I think I know what it is. I don't think I know what it is. I mean, I like Nipex. 
These things are like awesome. Oh, oh flush car. Oh, he got us. Man, dude. This is no way. These are so awesome. These are like the most expensive flush cutters next yeah. to the snap on. Wow. Wow. There you go. Oscar is the man. I mean, it's no box of cookies from Fro, but I mean, just kidding, Oscar. Thank you so much, Oscar. Dude, man. Thank you so much, man. Wow. So, yeah, these are the bomb. These are this super. The thing, Nipex makes. They make awesome everything. It's not a promo for sure, but dang. Oh, dude. I never even. Yeah, yeah, these are nice. All right, well, they'll be great until we lose them. Or you break them. Hopefully you won't break them. But I'm just, I'm just making them I have a second battery. I have a second battery and my amp doesn't have a fuse. Do I need one for it? Um, so that's, that's, yeah. I mean, technically, yes. You should always fuse everything. Any power wire that comes off of the battery should have a fuse on it for sure. Uh, just because you don't want something to happen to the amplifier that bat feeds into the battery, it'd be a bad idea. However, I mean, if you got six inches or 10 inch, like if here's the battery, here's the amplifier, the amplifier has fuses on it and it's not gonna back, you know, there's no way for that piece of wire to touch anything. Um, eh, it's your call, you know, but there has to be a fuse somewhere. So if there's no fuses on the amplifier, then definitely you're gonna need some form of external fuse because now you're relying on that 1% of 1% chance that that um, circuit in the amplifier that's gonna protect it against shorting out is gonna work. And so like even when we were talking to Rockford, they're like, there's a 99.999 chance it's gonna work, but there's a 0.001% chance it won't. Did you get the gas off of that? Yeah. I put some cleaner on it. Goes the other way. No, but it's like still. Yeah. This is the passenger side, by the way. I know this okay. is the passenger side. Right. Okay. Grab a like a Clorox wipe. Maybe that'll help a little bit. Um, he had to put his. He stayed out of town and he put his his jerry cans in the uh, back of the car and one of them leaked on his floor mat. So it's been like getting high on gas all day. So I had to put it outside. Um. If I cross over my P300T at 100 and cross over my head unit at 80, only the 80 will affect is, yes, that is correct. The only, uh, what's Oscar's Instagram? Do you know Oscar's Instagram? Um, yeah, yeah I will find it. Hold on, Fernando's gonna find it for us. He does, he, oh, he's got an awesome Instagram it. page. Yeah, and Take your time. No, no, take your time, take your time. Fernando will find it. Uh, don't waste zip ties, Nando. I always. All right, you got okay. it? All right, hold on, let me flip this around. This would just be easier. So it's Oscar, Ru how do you say that, Runes? All right, so anyways, go there or look up Oscar. O-S-K-R, I can't read it. N-R, oh, hold it, read it to me. O-S-K-R-N-V-R, too loud. Yeah. Dude, anyways, like go follow him. Look at this, dude. Look at that. Look at that one. Yeah, that's awesome. That's the that's the uh, the new thing for the direct, director. Uh, yeah. From Helix. No, show the world. Show the show, oh, the, hey show the world. Look at that. Oh, dude, this was laser cut acrylic that he did. Jeff got to see this. Actually, Jeff Smith tuned this for him, I believe, because he was help up there. Him. Yeah, help helped him tune it. Helped him. It. Yes, correct. Yeah. So definitely go check him out. Dude, yeah. Oscar never too loud. Right there, ah, that's what it means. Oscar never too loud. Okay, thanks. Sorry, I suck at acronyms. Yeah, there he is, rookie of the year. Oscar hooking us up with some flush cutters. So yeah. make sure you guys go follow Oscar on Instagram. Check out what he does. If you're in Texas, you got another installer to check out. He does amazing work and he's got a cool laser. What material do you guys use to make your amp racks? We use two different types of material. All right, so we use blown PVC, which is this stuff here. This is called Centra. Um, this particular brand is Paleolite. We get it in quarter inch, half inch, one inch. Um, we get it in white and black. Uh, the black is, or the white is cheaper. 
Um, we can just spray paint it because like seriously i mean what they want to add black is too just ridiculous because right now that stuff's super expensive um and then what we use for everything else um anything that needs to be like under a hood or it needs to be super rigid like the f-150 mounts are all made out of abs so this is a standard abs that you see everywhere we carry eighth inch which in this car the this got an eighth inch amp rack um because of the the seat bolts are super thin and and it's yeah it's just a headache um plus where this mounts the eighth inch is perfect um but we also have quarter and then we have 16th this this doesn't get used for amp racks this is like a really this is kind of a specialty thing like sometimes we have to do something that's bent or round like this it's it's an odd thing but we just keep one piece around just in case we need it um, and then we also have acrylic. Uh, we have some odd stuff here. Like this is basically blown PVC that has aluminum on both sides, signboard that you can get. Um, so yeah, there's that. My speakers lost their magnet and the sound stage plus the side sounds different help. Uh, can bad harness cause this? Oh, my speakers lost the magic and their sound stage plus can a bad harness cause this? Yes, a bad harness can cause it if the speakers are wired backwards. So let's say you put a harness in and you got positive and negative wrong on one speaker, then you'd lose everything because you hooked them up backwards. One speaker backwards screws up the whole machine. So if that's all you did, I would go and check your polarity on your speakers. If you have an iPhone, there's an app you can download Polarity Pop and that'll allow you to use your phone as a polarity checker. Put an aux jack into the phone, plug it in the radio and it'll just go pop, pop, pop. And you can go around to each one of your speakers and see if it's in polarity correct, if the polarity is correct. Quarter inch is thick, trust me, from finger scratching from zip ties. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Uh, what's the best DSP for a BMW with 13 speakers? Um, first thing you want to check is head over to MoBridge or NAV TV and see if they make an interface for it. I believe MoBridge is probably where you're going to look it's if it has the, uh, the fiber system in it uh, or the digital system. And then from there, uh, MoBridge makes it with either an RCA or a Toshlink output and you want to buy a corresponding DSP for it. When buying a DSP, you have to figure out how many channels you're trying to retain of those 13 speakers. Naturally, you don't necessarily need 13 speakers, or some speakers might be paired up. Like from the factory, if it has 13 speakers, the tweeter and the mid-range are on the same channel, so that's actually one channel. Um, but find out if someone makes an interface for it first, which somebody probably does, and then buy that and then move on from there. Dean, are you going to get on the OSS constant? No, I no. I don't really have any, I don't want to blow up any old school equipment that I have. Like I have the 225 HCCA that works, but I'm not going to blow it up just to, yeah, I don't care that much. I'd let those guys have fun. Um, sounds like a good time. And speaking of that, uh, tonight is Thursday night, which is a double feature head to head, back to back. We have um, reverse polarity on the Hi-Fi network. Hi-Fi Vega, that is. Him and I will be talking about a topic tonight. Um, I think tonight's topic, if I am correct, which usually I'm not when it comes to that, but I think it's what does it take to be an installer in the modern world? We're going to talk about all that neat stuff. And then after that, we're going to head over to Side Jag, which is the movie review channel that the two of us do. We have a special guest tonight, which is Mr. Hi-Fi Vega's son is going to be the special guest tonight. Uh, we try to have a guest every week. Next week, of course, we'll have a guest, but tonight's movie is Tenant. So for those of you that have or have not watched Tenant, uh, make sure you check out the show. It's going to be fun, as always. Um, but that's what's happening tonight. Uh, it starts at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time and then 9.40 Eastern Standard Time for the second show. So head over and watch those. Autospit DMI work. So the Audison Bit DMI is... Wait for it. Not made by Audison. It's made by Mobridge. So the Bit DMI is a Mobridge piece. So you, it's just a piece you buy. They rebrand. So if the Mo, if the DM, the Bit DMI works, then it's from Mobridge. So yes, it does make it a little bit easier. But yeah, that's it. Thanks, Jason. You knew that, though. 
Uh, I'm going to throw in the D61200. I want to hear it in my new car versus the... Well, go for it, Christian. You got nothing but time, man. Um, Christopher Nolan is trippy. Christopher Nolan sucks. Okay, let's just, let's just throw that out on the table. So tonight, I'm going to tell you how much he sucks. Because I'm not a Christopher Nolan fan. Um, I don't know if I necessarily wanted to review this movie. But it ought to be fun listening to me rant about it, that's for sure. Whose idea was void warranty on SD cards for JVC and Canon? I think it just came that way. I don't think it was anybody's idea at their point. I just think they didn't want to get a bunch of SD cards back. Um... I'm with you. I thought it was kind of stupid because Lord knows I buy enough SD cards and compact flash cards and micro SD cards. I got them coming out of my ears. I mean, we literally have probably 40 cards, it seems like, and none of them say that. So I just don't think they wanted to get any cards back. Um, it's something that they just didn't want to deal with, so they put that on there. But, yeah, it is kind of weird. Um, I wish you all could do install people around here suck. All we have is Best Buy. Like I said, this guy, this guy drove from Arizona to have us put in a key 501 and some new speakers. I'm just saying, your guess is as good as mine, but whatever, you know, sounds good to me. I'm not gonna turn him away. Um, yeah. Does it actually void the warranty? I, on the SD card? Yeah. Yeah, it would. Why wouldn't it? But it's an SD card. You just go buy a new SD card for 19 bucks. You know? The camera? No, it doesn't void the warranty on the camera at all. Uh, it's just the little SD card. The, the warranty is not void on anything but the SD card. So you can do whatever you want there. Uh, would an aux Y adapter work if two HS10s for the base knob? Maybe? I don't know. Um, I mean, if you're trying to, like, sum two signals into one, no. If you're trying to take one signal and go out to two, yeah. But, I don't know. Right, well, let's see. Um, wow, that's cool. So, anyways, that's what's happening. Fernando's been cleaning up this car so we can get it out and get it off to the customer. Uh, pretty excited about that. This one, this one's a lot of fun. As I said, working with that kicker key, we had to play with it a little bit, try something new, because this is really the first time we've ever done coaxels in the front door off of it. So we we're like, eh, let's give it a shot, see what happens, and it worked out pretty good. So we kept that tweeter playing, so it's nice and bright on the front end. Ooh, fun. Uh, when running a DM6 away, should I turn off the low pass filter or turn it all the way up? On your amplifier, yes. On your amplifier, just turn the low pass filter all the way up. I use the DM608's low pass filter out to the amplifier. So for example, when we do an LC 1.800, it doesn't have the ability to turn off the low pass filter. So I just kick it all the way up um, so that it's at like whatever 200 or 180 or something, 220 I think, and let it do its thing. And then I use the low pass filter in the processor because it's a much more accurate uh, low pass filter than the one that's on the amplifier uh, unless you got a CC you know CC1 or CCA1 and you can calibrate it but that just seems kind of silly when you have a digital one to play with um, hey from Denver all right let's go sounds like my subs are starving for air but in that comp company box any ideas that's, that's a tough one. I mean, it's a tough one. I mean, I don't necessarily know what a subwoofer sounds like starving for air. Uh, most subwoofers end up starving for power when they're in small sealed enclosures, not necessarily starving for air. They want more power. Um, I don't know what situation you have, but you know, basically when you put a subwoofer in a small sealed box or a sealed box that is, the, the power handling changes and if you don't you know if it wants more power most of the time it's not the other way around so yes it could want a big hole in the side of it because that would reduce the amount of power it needed and make it breathe more and then you get boomier so could be one or the other 
<laughs> um, need to redo my 2017 Camry to redo bad install. Any luck with DSR-1? Uh, DSR-1 is awesome. The only downside to DSR-1 that just kind of like, oh my God, no, is flashing the DSR-1 properly. You know, you have to make sure that you have it up to date. Um, works great if you have a Windows machine. You do have to download the Rockford Fosgate software as well as the iData software. Both of them have to be on the computer. Update the DSR-1 from the iData site first. Um, there's two updates that have to be done there. One set it for Universal and or a car as well as when you first pull up the uh, DSR-1 on the iData page, scroll down to the bottom of the page. Hiding down at the bottom of the page is the first update that you do, which updates the Bluetooth firmware. Um, it just reflashes the Bluetooth unit because of shipping or static or anything like that that might happen to it. If there's any ever a communication issue with the unit, it's because that firmware needed to be reflashed. Um, and then you take it over to Rockford site and update it to the most recent firmware. Um, and I can tell you now they usually ship without the most recent firmware on them. Uh, unless we go IB, we need way less power. Shout out to Jeff Smith. Hey! Uh, is the Kenwood Exelon XR DSP enough power for Morel Maximos? Yes, yes it is. It's actually plenty of power for those. Um, we've done a lot with that in the past. We haven't done anything with it recently, but we ran a full Virtu system on that in a Toyota, which was really nice. Um, front rear, front front tweeter, front mid, rear, and then added a second amp for sub, and it, that handled it. So, opinions on Alpine 8-inch underseat sub. You know, we reviewed the DSP one, so if you haven't seen that, check that out. We, we put one of those, we did a really weird installation on one of those. A guy bought one, he had an F-150, and he wanted it behind the back seat. It was an F-250, I'm sorry, and he wanted it behind the back seat. So we made a bracket like the factory would to mount it on, in there, nice and firm. And I was really surprised that it, it was like, okay, it's got bass. I mean, by no means is it to be confused with, you know, like something like, like this, a real woofer. But if you're just looking for that bottom end that doesn't exist, all of them aren't that bad. You know, Kicker has a 10 inch now, um, which hopefully we're gonna get at some point, they're gonna send us one. They've just been on back order forever. So as soon as we get one of those, I wanna play with it. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of those, you also have, uh, don't forget JBL, man. JBL has the Fuse now, um, which we got a chance to play with. It doesn't have an amplifier built into it, but it's like two of those Alpine 8-inch, um, and there's two 8-inch, and you can either mount it as one piece, which is thick, or you can separate them as two, and you just need a small amp to power them, and man, those were impressive as hell. So, and the idea is that you can put one underneath each seat. So make sure you just check out JBL because like they have a lot of really weird stuff like that that is super cool and sounds pretty good. Thanks, William Berg. Yeah, the Alpine DXP H8. Yeah, that was pretty neat. You know, if you're looking like if you're looking for a basic system upgrade, we put it in Haley's car just to try it out. And um, I, I wasn't disappointed. We were kind of shocked. Uh, confused with gain settings with high pass, low pass with the Alpine DSP. Anytime you're doing a DSP, gain settings become a lot of fun. Um, high pass, low pass. Um, I, I'm trying to remember if, if that means high level input or low level input on the Alpine is kind of funny. Um, if it's high level, you know, if you're running speaker level in, then that would be high level or the high pass. If you're running low level in or aux, I think they call it aux as low level on an Alpine DSP. Um, but yeah, anytime doing, yeah. Tonight, yes, reverse polarity and side jag. Make sure you check those out. And here's our next job. All right, I thought we had a radio install to do. All right, listen, guys, I'd like to stay at chat, but we're going to have to call it there. We got a car we got to finish before the day is over, and we are burning daylight. So you guys have a great rest of your day. Make sure to check out Reverse Polarity Night on the Hi-Fi Vega Network over there on YouTube, as well as stay tuned after that on the side jag. We're going to review the movie Tenant. So we'll see you guys tonight. Oh, yeah. Bye. Um, writing the accord. Ah, good idea. Definitely, definitely a good idea. Good day, everyone. How's everybody doing? You know what time it is? Mm -hmm. 
It's almost time for the show. Car Stereo Talk starts in like 15 minutes. Who's excited about that? Are you excited? I'm excited. I'm excited too. No, right now we're, we're done working hard. Thank God. This, this day sucked. Would you agree? Definitely. Today was, was not a fun day in Car Stereo Land. But hey, we have a fun afternoon planned, right? Yes. Always. <laughs> we got a box. We got a box here that came for us. That's pretty cool. And we got a bag um, over here. And I think I'm going to save this bag. I think we should save the bag till Monday. Yeah, I'll open it right now. You want to open it right now? You got a knife? Yes, yes, thank you. Oscar. They came. Bag two came. All right, we'll open it. All right, so let's see what we got in here. Oscar's in the chat. This is round two. Round two. For those of you that um, caught us earlier this week, Oscar had given Ooh, us some heavy. Nip X flush cutters. And bag number two, let's see what Mr. Oscar in Texas gave us. Oscar, throw up the name of your store. Uh, Dean, what's a better sub? Kicker. Uh, I mean, L7. L7 is always going to win. Ooh. Marklin, what's going on, buddy? Uh, oh my gosh, more Nip X stuck. Okay, dang. I gotta work where he's working. Dude. <laughs> hey, Jason. Oh, wow. This is oh, look at those. Oh, those are like butter. Those are finger cutters right there. Dang. Ooh. Wow. This is, this is. That's a cigar cutter. Oscar's the man. Make sure you guys follow him over on Instagram. Yes. Um, uh, wow. All right, hold on. It's, it's right here. Um, you got it? Yeah, O S K R N V R too yeah. loud. Oscar never Mr. too Oscar. loud. Oscar. You know, it finally someone had to figure that out for me because I, I honestly had no idea about it. What? I, I had no idea what it was. I suck at acronyms, so as everyone knows, but Oscar. make sure you guys wow. follow him. He's got some awesome stuff. He just did yeah. a really yeah. nice this was cool. So this was this is today, or no? Did he post the other I, I, one on Facebook? I think he posted this one today. Oh, so this is the finished one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So look at that. It's a high ten and old school Chevy. All right. So let's go, let's go backwards first. Hang on. Oh yeah. Oh, there you go. Before. So, yeah. Yeah. Working in progress. For all you look. Texas guys, there you go. Nice. Nice double USB in the corner. Okay. I get it. I was wondering where that went. Actually, yeah. I didn't even think about it. Wow, it didn't yeah. have a center console. That sucks. Yeah. You did a great job. Yes. Yeah, awesome. Great. All right, so there you go. Oscar's the man. Make sure you guys go over and follow him. Check out what he does. Uh, yeah, Bobby, it's happening. Uh, cut some zero gauge. Uh, grab a piece of zero gauge. Let's, let's, see, let's see how this cuts like butter. Do we have any zero gauge over there? I know we got four gauge. It's our new pink stool. It's a little shorter. Kind of sucks. Oh, you had, I was gonna say, I think you had zero gauge over by your desk. All right, so there we go. I right, cut it. Come on, man. You gotta hit the gym, bro. Ooh, man. I did a nice cut, though. Yes. Yeah, that is a nice cut. It is nice. Try to, try to strip them. Try doing the strip. There you go, a little twist action there. Don't squeeze too hard. Ooh, yeah. Ah! That would be me. That would be crazy. Yeah, go slow, take your time. There you go. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is nice work. Nice work in their light. I like that. All right, good job, Fernando. Good job. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, man. Thank you. Go home. No, no, we can't go home. We got to do a show here in a couple <laughs> minutes. Slow it down, man. You go home. Uh, thoughts on audio control D5-1300. Actually, you guys will see uh, one in action next week, and hopefully that'll be the video series that's going up next week. But no, we've had nothing but fun with it so far. We haven't gotten ours yet to play with, but... No. Um, we have yeah. played with the customers. Uh, and then this, this box here came to us, care of oh, Casey. Um, for those who don't know Casey, Casey and Natasha, they are Morel, and they sent us a care package. 
which I'm super excited about because let's be honest, anything that sells morale, says morale on it, I get super, super excited. Um, we are located in Clearwater, Florida. Those cutters are legit. That is, that is for sure. Ooh, look, a nice letter. Oh, I like a nice letter. And then new white shirts. I was gonna say, your hands better be clean, man. These are white shirts, bro. There, there you go, something like that. Look at that. And see, Natasha loves us because she hooks us up with a medium and a large. So she just doesn't send two larges and be like, sorry, Fernando, you don't Thank get a shirt. Thank you so much. Yeah, Natasha's the bomb. Ooh. This is the, this is the medium. Yeah, that one's yours. Oh, there's a big morale on the back. You should wear that tomorrow. I know, right? You should, you should totally take it home and wash it, wear it tomorrow. Um, Cause I'll be rocking this. Ooh, the new hats. Look at that. Oh yeah, new morale hats, multiple colors loving it so it's like i think it's cool I, i'm surprised it took her this long to come out with this one why well because this is the morale color mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so this is like full-on pimpy morale yeah, yeah so let's see what the card says i mean i feel like we're doing the birthday thing there's no money in the envelope <laughs> <laughs> sorry guys but this is the last time we send you something <laughs> don't forget in five minutes car steer talk over on youtube i think it's like less than five minutes uh, DQ61, yes, I've totally installed DQ61s before the big DSPs came out. That was one of my favorite products to put in. Uh, thank you for being awesome. We appreciate you guys. Please feel, feel free to give away five t-shirts and we will mail them directly to the winners. We have size medium, large, extra, extra large, 3X, 4X. Thank you from your team, Morel. <gasps> oh my gosh, look at that. So, look now, at that. Not, so not only are we getting shirts, that means you guys are gonna be getting shirts next week. We're gonna get five, of five you guys. shirts away. Yes. And see, Natasha knows, she, she knows that I'll just pay for the shipping and not care. So she's yeah. like, screw that. I'm gonna drop ship them directly to you guys. So we didn't even know. She's the best. So next week, you guys, well, uh, you know what, we'll do one a day. We'll do one next a day. Next week. Next week, we'll do one a day right here on Five Minutes of Five Star. Um, so stay tuned. We're mm -hmm. gonna we're gonna give them away. No, well, yeah. yeah you know yeah. what? Yeah. So are we gonna do them in five minutes, five star? Yeah, we can. All right, we will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll do them right here on Instagram. Five minutes, five star. Next week, week of morale giveaway T-shirts. I'm hoping they're the white ones. So and it, and, it, and it goes all the way up to big boy size. So everyone has a chance to win. Um, awesome. Well, you yeah. know what? We gotta wrap this up because this is the end of the week, guys. It's Saturday. Saturday's been fun. Thank you, Morel. Thank you, Oscar. Thank you, Natasha. You thank you, man. Casey. And uh, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Yes. And we will talk to you in about four minutes over there on YouTube. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Bye. Bye.